Uh, much more articulate and much more confident. Keep working on it. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Rita, and my topic about the is about the dining, improving dining alone experience. And I am a foodie, so I have a strong emotion to improve dining experience. Uh, so my thesis statement is. So my thesis statement is that providing, providing a, re, uh, providing a relaxed and comfortable and convenient to. I want to tighten, shake the cable, tighten the cable. This TV has a bad HDMI. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. Rita, come forward a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, my thesis statement is uh, is that providing a relaxed, convenient, comfortable, and health approach to uh, uh, for people who do not enjoy but have to eat uh, dine alone uh, to reduce their dining alone feelings, uh, which uh, which are bored, uh, lonely, and embarrassed. And my target market is China because Chinese dining along uh, dining culture has changed. And uh, uh, in China, in China, eating alone used to be a relax, uh, relatively tattoo, uh, taboo activity uh, because Chinese uh, like uh, have like the, uh, a noisy atmosphere and a lively crowd for a very long time. But now. Uh, more and more young people need find uh, opportunity, more opportunity, uh, more opportunity to find a job. Uh, so they move from a small town to a big city. Uh, so th and they have to sometimes they have to dine in alone because there is no family and no friends. Uh, and also more and more people uh, prefer eating outside or using delivery to eat because they do not want to cook food or. And they have no time to cooking, for cooking. And my target user is uh, for people who live alone and singles and office workers, uh, because they sometimes cannot find people to go dining with them. And also, there's no family and no relationship, or there's a, a, they have a long long distance relationship. And they do not want cooking, and they have no time cooking. And but they are, uh, they are food. Uh, they love eat food. So according of this, uh, according of this uh, information, uh, so far, um, the uh, the Chinese culture has changed because because of humans moving. So uh, there is a reality. Sorry, there is a, rela a reality. Uh, so people need to accept accept this uh, culture changing because re uh, because reality has already has already uh, uh, reflected to the culture. So there, so that's why some people still do not enjoy dining alone. So there, uh, during my interviews, there are thirty nine percent of people do not enjoy dining alone in China, uh, and I defined three words that um, feel uh, that bored and lonely and embarrassed uh, from my interviews. And so I do did the further research about the. Uh, <laughs> Eating psych psychology, and I find the eating psychology will affect uh, eating mood, and the bad mood will reduce appetite, and also too much stress will cause gluttony, and also eating alone will cause health issues, and uh, it will cause gastric ulcer because uh, because they uh, they do the rush dining. And also, eating alone will cause the irregular diet because because they can eat food whenever they want because they just a uh, one person and it it will hurt their stomach. So according of this, I I find some competitors. Uh, so these two is uh, it uh, can have a conversation to people, but it's 
it looks strange because people people talk with a machine and a toy. It looks strange. And this this is the restaurant for people who dining alone. But this looks like just the library, right? Is that real? Yeah, it's real. real. This is Japanese. This too is Japanese. Okay. <laughs> So I have the three, I found the three directions is the service design and system design and branding design. The service design is uh, improving service experience or improving delivery service. And the system design is improving dining alone experience or design a dining environment for future Chinese restaurants. And the branding design is creating a new dining alone themed restaurant. Uh, so my plan is that I need to do more research to uh, figure out my uh, to build a strong argument and figure out my um, opportunities, more opportunities, and also I need to interview more people and I and I analyze analyzes my data and build my storyline and keep working on my book and also continue work on my. PowerPoint presentation. Also, I need to uh, improve my presentation skills. Thank you. So, Rita, I think what makes this interesting is that you're you're not targeting the United States, right? So you're targeting uh, China. I think your preliminary research and how you kind of set the stage for your argument needs to be stronger. Okay, so I, I need to be kind of immersed in the culture that you're talking about mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of your audience is not going to be, well, a lot of your panel, mm -hmm. I, I would guess, mm -hmm. may not be able to relate to it. So you need to, to kind of bring it to us so that we can kind of understand it and, and feel and, and, and sympathize with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, you're just talking about something that we can't really connect with in a foreign land. Okay. Okay. And I think that's going to help. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think... In your earlier slides, um, actually, you know, it would be really helpful if you just land on your hypothesis or your problem statement when you guys, when we're giving you guys feedback. You mean this one? Or I think you had something. Uh, you had the start of a. Yeah, maybe this is it. Um, the, you know, you, you really got to kind of convince your panel that this this is. Is a real problem and a real concern, and I think some of your earlier slides aren't doing that. It's kind of, I don't know, in, in need of um, more support. Um, what you talk to people and you bring quotes to your slide presentation, um, graphs that kind of indicate and, and build your argument, um, that that's going to help your audience. Or your panel as well. I, I don't mean to say audience uh, uh, because I think you're going to have lots of classmates out there that are going to be able to connect with them. Um, and then, kind of fast forwarding and thinking about the future, um, I'm curious about how you validate something like this. Right, so, how do you? I mean, maybe the target isn't, you know, that you're trying to solve people eating too much or whatever that one slide said, you know, stress yeah. and all of that. Yeah, too much. Maybe it's as simple as identifying a new dining experience. <clears throat> and so I'm kind of taking the, the, the focus off of, you know, your thesis being this thing that helps people and saves people to um, dollars, mm -hmm. right? The opportunity to make money. Yeah. And so uh, that I think a lot of your panelists will be able to 
connect. Uh -huh. So we, you know, the panel may or may not care whether or not you reduce, uh, you know, overeating mm -hmm. for this target group by two percent. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, I don't know how you you validate mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think we can all, whether we're Chinese or American, could kind of understand and and and, and kind of. Um, Put ourselves in the shoes of a, of a dining experience that's different and unique, and could you know this this new casual dining that Chipotle supposedly invented has really become huge and influences uh, you know it's not quite fast food, mm -hmm. it's not quite a taco truck, but it's not the same in dining experience where you're paying you know thirty dollars for a meal. It's somewhere in between, and you might be able to take that same strategy and get people to kind of understand it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Again, you guys always feel like you need to kind of save the world, right? So Lucy, before you, wanted to save the American economy with engineering. It's, it's a nice thought, thank you very much. <laughs> but, you know, focus on your thesis. And so you as well. Um, so a new way to kind of approach this. Rita, do you envision your goal to be <clears throat> a new kind of restaurant? Yeah. Course, so, uh, <laughs> a restaurant branded so that I could always feel comfortable just going in and it's totally tailored for me eating alone. Mm. Say yes. <laughs> if that's, a, that's if a it's a restaurant. Okay. It's, it's kind of rhetorical question. Uh, okay. Um, you know, this could be pretty interesting because <clears throat> a lot of people have to eat alone, like you say, especially business travelers. Yeah. I mean, it's not just a Chinese problem, it's an American problem. It's, a, you know, it, when I travel for business, <clears throat> my biggest fret is, okay, where am I going to eat dinner? You know, especially if I'm, where am I going to eat dinner? Especially if I'm somewhere I really don't know, I'm not familiar with. Um, I don't even know where to go to dinner. Mm. And then, Co-workers or people I'm meeting so they'll go here or go there or go to this area of town. They're like, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> when you decide, she's which restaurant do I pick? Where do I end up? And then, so it'd be good for you to interview people. What do what goes on in their head and what do they finally decide on? For me, I tend to lately just decide on ending up somewhere that has a bar, not an alcohol bar, but a food bar, like a diner. Where I can mm -hmm. just sit at a stool and sit down and just talk to the server and just yeah. have my meal and I'm done. Like a sushi bar. Yeah, sushi, that's why sushi bars are so successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you almost expect people to show up by themselves and that's fine. Just strike up a conversation and, you know, that's a sushi bar culture. Mm -hmm. uh, American dining bar. Sometimes you talk, sometimes you don't. You know, they want to be left alone, just watch the football game or something. Um, so I end up going to a nice restaurant but if they have a bar I'll sit at the bar if I'm alone because I, I don't want the dining experience I don't need that I don't need the tablecloth I just want to eat <laughs> yeah. so I think if you find out what people's attitudes are when they're faced with dining alone eating alone mm -hmm. you'll get a, a little more insight into what's going on in their head and what they're looking for mm -hmm. um, and I, I just wrote a little note I noticed when I traveled and uh, women co-workers or you know I ask how was your trip da, 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 you know and <clears throat> they end up you know where did you eat you know that we, we start talking where did you eat how was the food and I hear more and more and more <clears throat> women who travel for business they eat in their room in their hotel room mm -hmm. so they don't right. it, they're not as adventurous and I don't blame them it's probably maybe it's kind of scary or you don't know. Maybe they're uncomfortable. Most <laughs> most people most My people work for downtime, and it could be downtime. Like I just need downtime. a lot of women to say, and men, some, some men, not too many men. But a lot of women says, I just need quiet time. I was working all day. I just want time for myself, and they can't find that time in for themselves at a restaurant or the bar, especially if a bar is full of men. You know, and that's a reality. I look every restaurant is usually. 
men, 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 because <coughs> mostly men are traveling for business. And once in a while, a couple of women, yeah. and they're eating along with a book <laughs> or iPad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, don't bother me. Yeah. I'm really busy. Mm -hmm. It's just don't bother me, right? But a lot of them just order into their room, which is, yeah. to me, kind of sad, but maybe, that, maybe that's what they want to do. Maybe they're looking forward to it. But you have to find out, mm -hmm. because I don't know. So you have to find some women who travel a lot for business, you know, not in the most glamorous places in, the, in America or Asia, it's just it's some tiny little town or whatever. Mm. And where do they eat? What do they eat? Mm. <clears throat> um, and are they looking for always healthy food or do they say, ah, I'll just have some fast food tonight, what the heck? Mm -hmm. You have to find out those things. Okay. Because that will tailor your thinking of how you can address this, this growing situation. It's not a problem, but it's a situation. And I think China, of course, you're, you're from China. Yeah. Yeah, they're faced with massive growth, yeah. massive change. This, your generation is facing the biggest change ever. No more dinner with family or yeah. village or friends or community. Oh, I'm in Beijing. Where do I eat? Oh, my God, I'm in Shanghai. Where do I eat? My friends called me. Okay, cool. Yeah. But that's maybe one one night for the week, right? Oh, now what do I do? Saturday night, no one's called me. Now what? What do I eat? How sad, right? Three minutes. So you have to find out those things. Mm -hmm. And w what would make them comfortable to go out and just go to some restaurant and at least feel good about that meal, mm -hmm. eating alone, and it was a r enriching experience. That would be a great design okay. um, research project, experiment. Thesis. Mm -hmm. You can figure that out. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so just a, a couple more logistical things here. Uh, the branding is really nice. Uh, it's a lot like your first assignment yeah. <laughs> class in ID processes, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember the colorways and everything. Yeah. So the point I'm making is the importance of branding, mm -hmm. right? And how we kind of totally explore right now. How we can how we kind of explore that thing in week one of semester one, right? I could I could identify this as Rita's project in a classroom with twenty other people because of the branding that she established for herself over a year ago. So it's really important those colors, those forms, the shapes, the textures. It it it, it screams of Rita. Okay, so really well done. Um, don't lose that when you get into your journals or if you have handouts or anything. Very consistent with it um, because it's, uh, it's going to serve you well. Um, I thought that your, your presentation was fine. Just dig up those old notes from my class. Keep working on it. Go to Colin. Go to the labs. Um, I, I see that you've improved since my class, which makes me think you can even be better. Okay? Project that voice a little more confidence. Um, I think we're done. Reader, one last comment. I really want to acknowledge that you've done the last three weeks. Mark and Chili, so you should know that Rita made a significant change in direction at session six. And her excitement was immediately present. What was the book for? What was the book for? A, Space? No, <laughs> improving uh, uh, shopping experience. Oh. <laughs> Good, this is better. <laughs> Good job. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.